ਇਸ 24 ਦੇ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਮੈਂ ਹਾਂ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਹੋਸਟ ਪਾਲ ਚੀਮਾ ਖੇਮਾ ਦੇ ਜਾ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਅੱਜ ਸਾਡੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਚ ਕੁਝ ਮਾੜੀ ਮੋਟੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਖੈਰ ਬੜੀ ਵੱਡੀ ਕੋਈ ਉਥਲ ਪਥਲ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਖੁਦ ਵੀ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਵਾਸ ਜਸਟ ਟੇਕਨ ਇਨ ਫੋਰ ਅ ਸਰਪ੍ਰਾਈਜ਼ ਟੁਡੇ ਮਾਫੀ ਚਾਹਨੇ ਆ ਜੀ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਫੇਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਹੋਸਟ ਜੁੜ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਆ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਅਮਰਿਤ ਸੋਰਾ ਫਰਮ ਐਬਰਟਸਫੋਰਡ ਬੀਸੀ ਰੀਮਿਕਸ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਜੀ 7789991531 ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਫੋਨ ਨੰਬਰ ਆ ਅੱਜ ਇਦਾਂ ਲੱਗ ਰਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਦਿਨਾਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਅਮਰਿਤ ਜੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਜੁੜਨ ਲੱਗੇ ਆ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿਉਂ ਵੈਕਿਊਮ ਗੈਪ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਮਹਿਸੂਸ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਪਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕਰਨ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪੈਰਾਂ ਪਰਾਵਾਂ ਮਿੱਤਰਾਂ ਦੋਸਤਾਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਲੱਖ ਲੱਖ ਵਧਾਈ ਦੇਣਾ ਚਾਹਾਂਗੇ ਜੇ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਦਿਨ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਜਨਮ ਦਿਨ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਐਨੀਵਰਸਰੀ ਮਨਾ ਰਹੇ ਹੈ ਆਪਣੇ ਮਕਾਨ ਦੀ ਕਲੋਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਦਾ ਆਨੰਦ ਲੈ ਰਹੇ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਘਰ ਕੋਈ ਨਵ ਜਨਮੇ ਸ਼ੇਸ਼ੂ ਦਾ ਆਗਮਨ ਹੋਇਆ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਰਮਾਤਮਾ ਲੱਖ ਲੱਖ ਖੁਸ਼ੀਆਂ ਦਵੇ ਤੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਮੁਹੱਲੇ ਨੂੰ ਦੇਸ਼ ਨੂੰ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਨੂੰ ਖੁਸ਼ੀਆਂ ਪ੍ਰਦਾਨ ਕਰਦੇ ਰਹੋ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਹੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਕੇ ਕੋਟ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਨੇ ਉਹ ਕੋਟ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਸਾਡੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਾਈਡ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾਵੇ ਅੱਜ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਮਾਂ ਬੜਾ ਵਰਤ ਲਿਆ ਬੜੇ ਕੁਇਕਲੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਕੋਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਲੰਘਾਂਗੇ ਇੱਕ ਕੋਟ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੋਈ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਸੈਨੈਕਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਜੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਫੁੱਲ ਨਾਮ ਲੂਸੀਅਸ ਐਨੀਅਸ ਸੈਨੈਕਾ ਬਾਈ ਨੇਮ ਸੈਨੈਕਾ ਦਾ ਯੰਗਰ ਇਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਪੁਰਾਣੀ ਸਦੀਆਂ ਪੁਰਾਣੀ ਗੱਲ ਆ ਜੀ 65 ਸਾਲ ਦੀ ਉਮਰ ਚ ਉਹ ਇਸ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਨੂੰ ਅਲਵਿਦਾ ਕਹਿ ਕੇ ਚਲੇ ਗਏ ਸਪੇਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪੈਦਾ ਹੋਏ ਸੀ ਰੋਮਨ ਫਿਲੋਸਫਰ ਸੀਗੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਕੋਈ ਵਿਕੀਪੀਡੀਆ ਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਲੰਬੀ ਚੌੜੀ ਖਬਰ ਤਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਅਵੇਲੇਬਲ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਰ ਇੰਨੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਬੜੀ ਚੰਗੀ ਗੱਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਪਰ ਮਾੜੀ ਗੱਲ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਮੌਤ ਦਾ ਕਾਰਨ ਆਤਮ ਹੱਤਿਆ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਫੇਰ ਵੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਚੰਗੀ ਗੱਲ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸੋਚ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਦ ਗ੍ਰੇਟੈਸਟ ਰੈਮੇਡੀ ਫॉर ਐਂਗਰ ਇਜ਼ ਡਿਲੇ ਮੇਰੀ ਯਾਦ ਹੈ ਮੇਰੇ ਬੀਜ਼ੀ ਵੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਜੇ ਦੋ ਬੰਦੇ ਆਪਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਗੁੱਸਾ ਕਰਨ ਤਾਂ ਇੱਕ ਬੰਦਾ ਆਪਣੇ ਮੂੰਹ 'ਚ ਪਾਣੀ ਦਾ ਘੁੱਟ ਭਰ ਕੇ ਬੈਠ ਜਾਵੇ ਉਹ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਇਹਦੇ ਪਿਛੇ ਖਾਣੀ ਦੱਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਕਿ ਹਸਬੰਡ ਵਾਈਫ ਦੀ ਆਪਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੜੀ ਲੜਾਈ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਹਾਰ ਕੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਤੂੰ ਨਾ ਫਲਾਣੇ ਸੰਨਿਆਸੀ ਕੋਲ ਚਲੀ ਜਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਤੈਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਤਕਲੀਫ ਤੋਂ ਆਜ਼ਾਦ ਕਰ ਦੇਗਾ ਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਘਰ ਦਾ ਕਲੇਸ਼ ਮੁੱਕ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਉਹ ਸੰਨਿਆਸੀ ਕੋਲ ਗਏ ਸੰਨਿਆਸੀ ਨੇ ਬੜੇ ਧਿਆਨ ਨਾਲ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਸੁਣੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਸੁਣਨ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਸੰਨਿਆਸੀ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਹਸਬੰਡ ਨੂੰ ਕਿ ਤੂੰ ਆਪਣੇ ਮੂੰਹ 'ਚ ਪਾਣੀ ਦਾ ਘੁੱਟ ਭਰ ਲੈਣਾ ਉਹ ਜੇ ਜਨਾਨੀ ਬੋ
ਅਮਰਿਤ ਸੋਰਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੂੰ ਮੈਂ ਬੜੀ ਜਲਦੀ ਲਾਈਨ ਤੇ ਆਉਂਗਾ ਅਮਰਿਤ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਵਕਤ ਦੇਣਾ ਵੀ ਅਗੇਨ ਗਾਟ ਸਮ ਗਲਿਚ ਆਡੀਓ ਨਹੀਂ ਆ ਰਹੀ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਬੈਕ ਵਿਦ ਯੂ ਵਿਦ ਇਨ ਅ ਫਿਊ ਮਿੰਟਸ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਥੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਟੋਟਲੀ ਯੂ نو ਅਨਸਰਟਨ ਫੋਰ ਅਸ back testing 1 2 3 hello mic testing 1 2 3 we will be having some issues with the echo today something i cannot control and i don't have much time for this mr sura can you hear me clear i can hear you clearly is there any echo coming in sir uh not a huge amount okay is it uh, okay now i can hear can you hear me i can hear you loud and clear sir perfect so mr sura welcome to the studio sir uh, sorry welcome, for keeping you waiting i am trying to see if i can uh, fix this echo issue uh, abilities now you are quite low turn up no, quite yeah. low can you there you go now? little more is echo coming in little more mic testing 1 to 3 yeah yeah you can hear you okay as long as we can avoid some echo uh, we should be okay i do have some gadgets but i did not get time to plug that in so i didn't know what's going to happen today vmix software prompted me to update it so i set it up on update and for two days i did not touch computer i wasn't broadcasting for the last two days monday and tuesday and when i came in today i saw that the update uh, was still running and it was wow. telling me this is unable to uh, close some app so i tried to close it redo it redo it so i think in the meanwhile it deleted many of my files and when i open vmix there was nothing here no guest call in no link nothing it totally threw me into so many loops that i finally could run it but the echo is there because i'm using my computer's microphone and this monitor headphone is not functioning so sorry for this uh, setup well this is what we can do we can try to figure out how we can uh, run our lives exactly yes yeah i mean sometimes there's challenges and uh you know like you said in in uh, some of the challenging things you got to step back and um take a deep look inside i think at the end of the day that uh, quote that you just mentioned it's trying to address um patience everybody needs to have patience uh with everything yes. really so yes you know that's that's all we can do right yeah you know? exactly <laughs> i just um, wanted to be in touch uh, with the audience with you so mon- wednesday and fridays i am broadcasting from my own system but other days i have been requested to support a tv channel called sanja punjab the guy who owns great. that station he is running for uh, mayor in brampton So you asked me to help his his partner run the show. So this is where I go these days. 10 to 11 oh, o'clock. Yeah. So Wednesdays will always be an exception and so would be Friday. So I will be here on my live broadcast. So uh, he's a good man. His name is Bob Singh. 
a very generous, very kind soul, uh, supports people, and I couldn't say no to him. So that's, yeah, a candidacy for mayoral support. I mean, obviously, they're going to be doing tremendous things around the community. This is a, um, you know, an, a strong anchor for for any community when they're they're moving along because you need uh, you need some good guidance from people who have had one their own life success and then they know how to organize um, a cooperation right yeah that's so true. that's excellent yeah well I couldn't say no to him and I can never say no to him are you still having my echo there it's a slight echo, but actually it's pretty good. Okay, well, I'm trying to cut it down as much as I can. There's no echo now. Fantastic. Woohoo! We got it. We got it. <laughs> yeah. Patience, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I've been playing around while you were speaking. Uh, yeah. My All my connections to my, you know, switcher is lost. So now I have to find out where I have to find myself as a solo and where I have to find you in, uh, you know, in this setup, the way you are right. looking at. Anyways, we are anyways live. So housing market has been uh, undergoing tremendous changes every day. People are worried, scared, house prices keep going down, but there were certain municipalities uh, which actually showed the numbers going up. Those municipalities in Peel region was Mississauga went up by 0.32% as of uh, uh, 21st August as compared with month of July. And then another municipality that gained uh, was Georgina 2.36% the house average house price went up uh, and Markham went up by 4.62% in the York region Witcher Stofield resisted a gain of 13.2% as of August 21. I don't know what happened later on. I didn't get a chance to check it up, but maybe during the broadcast, I will revisit those numbers. Ajax went up 1.85%. Brock went up by 7.5%. Clarington went up by 8.52%. Oshawa <coughs> went up by 4%. And uh, another municipality that went up was Mono in Dufferin and Shelbourne in Dufferin 1.353%. Cambridge in Waterloo, Kitchener Waterloo area went up by 1.51%. So that means there is a movement going on the upside. There is an uptick in certain municipalities and the prices are going to go up slightly. I think the main reason for that is uh, stabilizing of the interest rate for now. As long as the interest is stabilized, we'll keep seeing the uh, buyers going outside to make their home purchases. For some, this is the golden time. Sometimes the window is very, very small. So you have to understand that window is very small. One has to act pretty fast. So mortgage rates, we are expecting a 75 basis point increase come September 7. So strong speculation, we are still having high inflation of 7.6%. If the in, uh, overnight lending rate goes up by 75 basis points, you will be looking at a prime rate of 5.45%. 5 so let's hope it doesn't happen, but there are strong indicators of Bank of Canada going further up. My expectation for August inflation is that it will be around either 7% or 7.2%. In June, it was 8.1%. After government took serious stand on lowering it, the inflation came down to 7.6% in July. And I'm pretty hopeful this will be either 7 or close to 7, 7 plus 1, 2 in this ratio. That will be a welcome step. Uh, efforts of Bank of Canada would have paid off because once they are able to control inflation, 
sellers can see their home prices stabilizing, becoming more sane, and buyer will have a better option to make their purchase and negotiate the right price, of course, with conditions. So if you see the house price going up, then you be very careful. Do not repeat the cycle of 2014, 2017, that your realtor tells you to pay 50, 60, 80,000 over asking price. Tell him to stop. You take your action. You are also an integral component to control the rising prices, not only the realtors. It is easy to pass the blame over to realtor that they asked me to increase the price. What do you think, Amrit Sura? Yeah, so again, on a level of control, I think basically the buyers should again have the ability to, to make, um, you know, make the request that uh, approaching it in a sensible manner as opposed to uh, having that scarcity mentality and overpricing or overbidding for something because your your fear of missing out and and that's what really hyped everything up for the last year and a half uh is one the lack of supply two the uh you know the parties that were within the the industry obviously the buyers are included within those parties um they were not necessarily being patient enough i mean uh you know granted we had a a uh um, you know, a dynamic situation where where people thought that um, you know the interest rates would would uh, remain uh, low for the longest time. So you know they they were able to qualify for mortgages uh, a little bit easier and uh, um, taking taking the next steps. Um, you know, you, you they almost felt pushed that they they were obligated to pay hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars more than asking. So now it's a different scenario where we're seeing some some homes in in say for example Central Abbotsford, uh, if they had been marketed last year, they may have garnered a couple hundred thousand dollars more because of uh, the demand by the buyers now. Uh, a similar such house may be sold for thirty or forty thousand dollars less than what it's priced. So yes, the price is the price, and the seller has a price in their mind. Um, but that's just an offer for treating. So at the end of the day, someone can come in with reasonable uh, uh, steps. They can say, "Okay, we want this place. Uh, these are the conditions," and. Uh, um, let let's take uh, take action in a in a patient and structured manner as opposed mm -hmm. to being uh, a, a bull in a china shop so last year uh, there were lots of bulls in china shops and um, um, a lot of pushing and pulling happened uh, and and you know in res in in that regard uh, yes some people are they're happy they've moved um, some people have acquired property uh, and they're still in the, their properties, which is they're, they're thankful for. So mm -hmm. um, I think the next steps are for the next group of buyers who are going to have the opportunity to um, make, make these transactions happen, right? Yes, that's perfectly true. So that's what I'm saying. Everybody should have learned a lesson from the previous markets that went out through the roof. If the realtor suggested to give 50000 higher than asking price, as a buyer, one should hold off that thought. They say, no, 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 no. I am not going to go over $10,000, whether he gives it to me or not, I am willing to walk away. Ability to walk away from a purchase, I think that's what is going to control the market for decades to come. It's not that, oh, you know what? I am okay, I will pay my three years of equity today and then look like an idiot, get into my house and will not be able to smile for at least three years. Because if I lose a job, then what happens? I have already eaten three years worth of my equity. So I'm going into a delinquent stage. Bank of uh, uh, the RBC actually 
RBC thinks, sorry, Bank of Montreal, Bank of, Mo Bank of Montreal thinks that the delinquencies on mortgage are going to increase and the bank is expecting at least uh, a lot of uh, people, a lot number of people failing to make the payment because it's going to go higher. And they say 25% of their mortgages are secured. Second renewals are spread out over time and only 10% of their uninsured installment uh, mortgages product are up for renewal in the next 12 months, giving borrowers some time to adjust. But they are expecting uh, to quote it. It says in its third quarter earnings call, the Bank of Montreal said rising interest rates will have the greatest impact on mortgage borrowers at renewal time. And the bank will see 14 billion of its uninsured portfolio renew in 12 months. And they do expect the recent interest changes to impact borrowers when they refinance or renew, which ultimately could lead to increased delinquencies. This is said by the chief risk officer, Pat Cronin. So they are really thinking this is going to happen and if they are thinking that they must be thinking very right. Many capped variable rates mortgages, they will see either their amortization period increased, the time required to pay off the mortgage or they will see their monthly payments go up because every lender does not give you capped variable rate. Or if they give you a capped variable rate, they may choose to increase your payments rather than increase your amortization period. So you got to control how you want to buy the house. This time, do not listen to any realtor. Listen to yourself. Listen to your gut feeling and then take a decision. Try to help keep the prices sane and within everybody's reach. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, they they've got to look at their uh, expenditure, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's not just going to fall out of the sky. They've got to know, okay, this is the income coming in, um, yeah. and what steps are you taking in order to make uh, make those uh, those payments happen? At the end of the day, they they have to make a consistent uh, payment. Um, and not get into the situation where they've overpaid and then uh, uh, they're suffering. So it, it yeah. goes mostly on uh, the borrower's mindset. I see then borrowers they start blaming realtors that this is what they got. They the, they made them do. It is a very scary situation. I'm working on a transaction. I'm ready. Appraisal came low. The guy has his own lender who refuses to lend beyond a certain limit. The guy got into a big shortfall, a shortfall of uh, about $200,000. And we are all trying to fix that. And I had a lengthy discussion with my seller clients today. I told them, A, either give him $100,000 off on the price, I will reduce my commission. B, reduce by 75 grand. I will try to help the buyer on my end. Try to reduce his gap. C, refuse to agree on this change. Or D, give them a loan and that will be subject to risk. He may pay you back, he may not pay you back. He may take one year to pay, he may take three years to pay. So we had a lengthy discussion over phone today, this morning, and I said, I'm sorry, I don't want you to do anything, but this is where we are. And they said, Paul, that's okay, we're trying to find a solution, which I greatly liked, the phrase, finding a solution. But every buyer is or, or seller is not that lenient. They say, okay, we sold it for $2.9 million, we need $2.9 million. And then they risk losing the sale, trying to relist, sell for a lower price, and go after the buyer, the first buyer, 
for the deficit amount. Consider the cost of uh, litigation, time, loss of working hours, and then the profit will be same if you rather break on the price rather than go to all those headache and still net less money than that. And the stress, the stress amount, and, and right? The stress. Well, That's stress gonna... comes for free actually, it has no cost to it. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think people are lining up for, for the stress aspect, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a, um, you know, it's a bit of a seesaw situation where you're, uh, you're trying your best in order to make something happen, right? At the end of the day, they'll, they'll, you know, they can, they can make it happen in some way. Um, I certainly hope that things work out, which, uh, I'm sure they will. Um, yeah, I really hope too, because that's how it should be. So yeah. over the past seven days in the region of Peel, and region of Peel comprises of municipalities of Brampton, Mississauga, and Caledon. There have been 280, let me go back, 289 new listings that came in during these seven days. But then the sold listings were 189. That gives me a sales to new listing ratio for these seven days at 65%, which is cool. Well, we were seeing 40, 41%, 35% sales to new listing ratio, but sales to new listing ratio now is going up which indicates buyers are jumping in, trying to buy, because I think this is kind of getting adjusted to the new norms, to the new realities of interest rates. And for those people who bought houses in last two, three years, they may not understand this. For them, 5% could be a very, very high rate of interest. But ask me, when I took my first mortgage, it was at 6%. So for me, that is the normal. Yeah. Right? But it was so six percent. But the, yeah. But the I property prices were really, quite low. It is quite low. It's six percent is still okay. So that's why banks were trying to qualify people at stress test rate. But stress test means nothing these days. If a bank is giving six percent, they will qualify you at eight percent. This is insane. Stress test must be done with now. We don't need stress test. The stress mm. test was only to uh, see if this buyer or borrower will be able to make payments if their interest rates go up to 5.25%. But now they are there, so why do they need stress test now? Are we expecting the rates to go 10%, 11%, 12%? Well, if that's the case, okay. But if not, stress test should be removed. Bank of England took this uh, off their list now. They don't stress test. Right. Yeah, I think the the that strategy was to sort of see where how these guys can perform um, and it's reached its peak. So yes, some of these guys who were qualified, they can perform on their obligations. So um, Obviously, the stress test worked for that phase of things. Now, like you said, are they anticipating um, more uh, inflated rates? Then, you know, at the end of the day, they'll they'll have to sort of determine determine that uh, as the weeks and days go on, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, in 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 your um, in your part of the world, on on the other aspect of the financing, um, you've got uh, you've got some announcements coming up. You know, potentially September seventh, an increase of uh, 0.75%, um, or, or point seven five percent, or point seventy five basis points. Uh, um, technically, um, yeah. do you see that happening? 
Well, I am pretty confident they will go up. They have to go up unless the inflation is under control, uh, Marit. So they will keep changing the rates and everything for all the variable mortgage rates, you will see a change in value. So we're still at 7.6% now, right? Yes, the inflation is still at 7.6%. Uh, the statement for inflation will be released somewhere around 16 or 17th. So then we'll know exactly what is uh, the inflation rate. So since January gradually increased, June being the sixth month, there's a peak, so down to 7.6%. The trajectory might come down, you think? Uh, for the interest rates? Yes. Well, once the inflation comes down, the banks will kind of stabilize the interest rates. When the interest rates stabilize, the house price will still keep uh, coming down. So that will give better affordability to buyers. Mm -hmm. So the target uh, inflation rate is between 2 and 3%. That is going to take, I think, all of 2023. It's not going to be, uh, I think, feasible to bring it to 2 to 3% by end of this year. It's, it simply won't be possible. So that's how we expect that the market will stay down till end of 2023 and may start picking up slowly after, uh, let's say, first quarter of 2024. Just speculations, we are all trying to make educated guesses here. Yeah, so it's, there's been substantial changes even last year. You know, mm -hmm. we had you know, beginning of the year was 1% inflation rate. And then at the end of the year, 4.8%. So obviously there was different dynamics in the market at that point, but at a rapidly increasing rate, um, they were still lending uh, at a fraction of, of what, what was being lent in the yes. past months. Right? Yes. So, I mean, the blame game, yes, in some scenarios, the blame game can be pushed towards the buyers and, and the realtors for inflating the prices and then uh, the fear of missing out. But at the end of the day, you know, the biggest, the biggest lip service provider <laughs> sometimes is the government themselves, right? So yeah. the mess... This, the simple mess that we're in is thank, thanks, thanks to, uh, thanks to the people that are that running the, the country. Yeah. So well, we should be grateful to them, basically. We should be grateful, yes. <laughs> in Canada, the GDP has grown up. Uh, like they say, Canadian GDP growth, oh, sorry, slowing into summer, GDP rose 3.3% annualized in quarter two to build on a 3.1% quarter one gain. Bounce back in service spendings and higher business investment offset housing downturn. That is the money they are losing on housing, they are trying to, they are recovering from the service spending and higher business investment. Pace of growth slowing into the summer as inflation and Bank of Canada rate hikes bite advance estimate of July output down 0.1%. So this is the report from uh, RBC. And they say the quarter two GDP gain was roughly a percentage point at annualized rates lower than expected but still market marked a small tick up from the 3.1% increase in quarter one. Residential investment pulled back sharply as housing markets slowed following Bank of Canada rate hikes. But consumer spending jumped 9.7% to 
led by a bounce back in travel and hospitality spending after winter pandemic lockdowns were largely lifted. Businesses spent more on investment, 13.9%, and accumulated more inventories. But much of those purchases came from abroad via a huge 30.5% increase in imports. So net trade was a large net subtraction from GDP add up despite a solid export gain of 10.9%. It is too complicated for me to understand but uh, they are saying GDP has gone slightly up which is not bad which is cool. But this is how the things have been moving right now. So we, uh, as GDP goes up, people's power to buy will also increase. Inflation comes down, rates stabilize, people would be able to buy houses as the prices are still coming down. This is kind of a scenario we are in. It is still a balanced market in many municipalities. It's not tilted either in favor of buyers or in favor of sellers. So I just shared municipalities where gains were uh, uh, reported. So right now, Amrit, I have municipalities as at end of 30th August, which is yesterday. Misaga has gained 1.32% versus July prices. It was 0.32% before when is opened the dialogue. East Gulibri went up by 7.95% month over month. Average price in Markham went up 4.8%, 4.18%, and Richard Stofield went up 9.10%. So we are seeing certain municipalities in GTA going up in prices. So I am not lying. These are all real data. We are deriving them from Toronto Original Real Estate Board and of course they are being presented without any uh, guarantee or warranty as to their um, being 100% accurate. Just presenting as we are seeing them. So what I want to say Prices are going up, Amrit. I don't know how it's in your municipalities, around Abbotsford or in Abbotsford, but we yes. are seeing an uptick in average prices now. Yeah, I mean, availability is going to be the biggest thing too, right? At the end of the day, if if uh, if there's no if there's no supply, then the prices will gradually increase. I mean, uh, from what I've noticed, certain categories are. Uh, are on a downward trend um, mm -hmm. as far as uh, homes are concerned. I mean, in the last, I mean, just in the last day, there's been seven price reductions. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that'll that really help you understand that uh, um, day to day, it's, it's a fluctuation. I've not seen many prices gone up as far as uh, the increase in um, the ask is concerned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and certainly uh, there's more lengthy uh, listings on the market so opportunities for buyers if the if the listing is a little bit stagnant they might uh, be able to acquire a property at a lower price mm -hmm. uh, down payment goes down uh, because uh, um, obviously the price has gone down and uh, if yeah. If they're able to manage the, if they're able to get the the financing approved, then they're uh, they're in a great uh, scenario because some some of the people that lost out in in uh, the bidding wars, mm -hmm. they still have their down payments ready, right? Yeah, yes, so you're right. There's still going to be buyers. Uh, a lot of mm -hmm. people are going to just capture on on what's available. Um, yeah, and and see whether or not there's some kind of flexibility um, for, for, for a workaround between the seller and the buyer. Mm -hmm. So, so. Uh, you know, it, it, is, it is coming uh, thick and fast, um, the changes, but, uh, 
you know, everyone that needs to move, uh, they will move. Uh, I, I was speaking to a lady earlier, uh, you know, who, who was on a search locally. They've now decided they're going to move to, you know, Alberta. So okay. no more Abbotsford. They're going to go off with their with their job into another another province because the price points are a little bit uh, more conducive. Um, their job stays the same. They, they earn the same money. Um, uh -huh. So a constant wave of coming and going will continue to happen, as you know. I mean, at the end of the day, um, it, it, everything is cyclical. Yes, there's going to be a tremendous amount of... Uh, um, is it agony? Uh, yeah. Agony, I wouldn't say so much as that. Uh, for Definitely for the people who are uh, locally based and uh, have not had the opportunity to, to really save substantial amounts of money for down payments, they, they, they might have to wait a little while or they might go into a pre-sale scenario where they put a fixed amount down and get prepared for completion two or three years down the road. So um, yeah. still opportunity. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I think there's there's ample opportunity for everyone. We're seeing an uptick in the number of people transitioning from Hong Kong uh, still coming into yeah. to, to BC. Immigration so, is going on strong. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, again, the demand is going to continue. So that's why 1% to 2%, you'll see the fluctuation. Is it going to continue that way? Um, I think at the end of the day, we've just got to have the patience to ride the storm, right? Yes. Um, stay, you know, stay steadfast and uh, be determined on your goals, uh, whatever they may be for home ownership or providing homes, you know, some, some, uh, some people acquire properties in order to provide rentals. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that will continue happening. You're right. And here is yeah. a, a list of more municipalities, uh, which have gained in average home prices. So I told you Witcher Stofield went up by 9.10%. Uh, many municipalities in Durham region, which is on the east side of Toronto, such as Ajax went up 1.64%, Brock went up 4.38%, Clarington went up 6.64%, Oshawa went up 4.48%, Uxbridge went up by uh, twenty point zero three percent municipalities in Durham region, uh, and uh, municipalities in the Dufferin region, East Luther Grand Valley went up by eight point nine three percent as of thirtieth August, twenty twenty two, and then Mono, uh, then Mono, Mono went up by three point three one percent, and Cambridge in Waterloo region went up by 1.70 percent so i have a list of about 33 municipalities out of which if i count them one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve about 12 municipalities of 33 have resisted a positive gain a, a gain is always positive anyways have shown a gain in average prices from July, month or month. Something you may like to think about in a quiet corner of your of your home, or renting or you're planning to m make a switch to bigger or smaller house, so think about it. This may be the peak lower prices as well. Just as the peak high prices, there may be peak low prices still. So when the curve starts going upward, is this the point? Ask yourself this question. Mississauga went up by 1.32%. And that's a great news for Mississauga residents. So we are at 11.28 p.m. Amrit, any special thing you want to share with us today? Sorry for 15 minutes loss in the beginning. 
No, not at all. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, getting the message across to people is, is you know, you, you've got to continue on with uh, with your goals and your, you know, hopes and desires for home ownership. Uh, if it is not this year, it might be next year, right? So position yourself with, with, a, with a good professional that's going to be patient with you and not force and push you into a direction which is going to be uh, detrimental to your guys' uh, family life, right? So at the end of the day, yes, everybody needs shelter. Do you have to hold off for six months? Do you have to hold off for uh, a year? Make that decision based on your pocketbook, right? Uh, at the end of the day, um, there will still be opportunity in years to come. Now, as Mr. Chima has said, there's there's a there's a peak low season. Now that might be the one where, while you were being beat uh, in in the competitions last year, you may be in a position to acquire that space because uh, you've had the ability to hold on with the deposit monies ready. So, um, you know, act quickly with a professional, uh, you know, mortgage specialist, mortgage broker, uh, and, and, a, and a local realtor who you trust um, and, and make those moves because at the end of the day, there's, there's going to be, um, there's only going to be limited time opportunities, right? And we just never know when the shift is going to happen, uh, uh, in the other di direction. That's true. That's so amazing words of wisdom, I would say. So guys, before we take your permission, I'm once again, uh, sorry for 15 minutes lapse. I didn't know this coming, so but we still were able to get the message across that you know how the market is today as of 30th August 2022. Before we leave, I would like to offer our condolences to those who lost their family member. PC24, Paul Shima, Amir Sora, we join you in your grief. May God give peace to the departed soul and bestow you with strength so you can overcome the biggest vacuum in your life. We'll see you on um, Friday now because I have been doing another show at the same time. You can find me on Sanja Punjab TV show every day except Monday and sorry except Wednesday and Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. We'll see how we can make changes but that's the schedule right now to help a good friend who is running for mayoral elections in city of Brampton. He's a great guy, Bob Singh is his name. You may like to look up to him, you may try to, you may like to give him a call and find out what he can uh, do for you guys if he becomes the mayor of city of Brampton. Thank you very much for your time, we'll take your leave and uh, see you next time. Till then, bye bye. Oh, by the way, we are going to have six panelists on Friday, 10 to 10, 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. right here on this broadcast. Stay tuned for more information. Thank you very much.